What's happening, friendos? Welcome back to the Tropical Garage. My name's Troy, and today we're going to be embarking on the Frog Room Tour for 2022. Uh, I'm really excited to share some amazing footage with you, and uh, I'm actually kind of proud of what I captured in this tour. I do think it's the best tour of mine to date, by far. Um, it's also a really long video, so I'm not going to ramble on any further. So, to start things off, we are going to do an update on the 300 gallon display paludarium. And uh, yeah, grab a beer, grab a snack, whatever tickles your fancy, and let's get this thing underway. All right, guys, um, my shotgun mic died on my camera, so uh, doing a voiceover for the portion of this video. So here is the 300 gallon storm paludarium. Quite a bit has changed since the last update in June. The main one being that the glass frogs and the Adelopis are no longer residents here. The glass frogs have been moved inside to my 180 gallon redhead histrionica small form vivarium. And I ended up selling off all the Adelopis balios because for me, they were really almost primarily nocturnal. And I figured if I was going to keep nocturnal animals, I wanted to keep these in the tank. And these are the Cruzio Hyla Craspidopus, which, in my opinion, is one of the coolest tree frogs on planet Earth. As far as the paludarium itself, I'm really happy with it, and I'm happy with the way the plants have been growing in. I still don't have fish in the aquatic area yet, but the water seems to be doing pretty good. Uh, I really only serviced the sump like three times in almost two years. But I mean, that kind of makes sense since I don't have any actual you know, fish food waste or anything like that. But I do have some glass frog tadpoles still in the water area developing. So I guess they do create some sort of waste. Uh, in terms of the plants, from the initial planting, I've obviously lost a few plants. But the majority of them are still here and they're obviously thriving. Particularly this uh, anthurium or aquinum. It's an absolute stunning plant. Um, this leaf is about 28 inches long and um, yeah, it's doing amazing. And this is the Anthurium vecii. Both of these are about their uh, maximum size for this tank. Um, they're starting to push on the glass and uh, it's going to be a problem pretty much. I do also have some Gloriosum in here. Um, it's a really nice plant. Lots of different cuttings of the varicosum. Uh, I think I have black or red, or maybe both. I, I don't actually know. Uh, I know I have some cobra. Um, the cobra is up here. And I have some regular or standard. And I also have the dwarf or mini. I don't know. There's a ton in here. Tons of stuff. Um, the liverwort is doing really, really good. And I'm so pleased with how it's growing on the wood. I specifically only used the Ricardia liverwort in this tank because I wanted the shortest and brightest green to contrast off the dark water area. And I didn't want any stringy moss because since this is a display tank, I do trim the tank more often than most of my vivs. Um, and not having to trim the moss regularly was something that I wanted. I did also add a fog system, which I showed in the last update. It comes on periodically from a smart plug timer. I haven't really been running the rain system unless I'm shooting a video or a reel or something. 
Uh, since I have all males in here, I haven't really had the need to run the rain system. But, best believe, once I get a female, I'm going to be making it rain on these toads. See what I did there? Now, I did have to trim some of the Vresia hieroglyphica leaves, as you can see here. Uh, they were pushing on the front of the glass and getting them all dirty, so uh, it's whatever. But, anyways, uh, here's some more shots of the Craspidopus. Really, really cool frogs. But yeah, I'm, uh, I'm really happy with this tank. I do have night lighting on this tank, so uh, I'm able to watch the Craspidopus be active at night, which is really cool. And the waterfalls or drip ball areas, whatever you want to call them, are doing really well. I think this one on the far left is my favorite. Uh, it's got a really good, cool drip pattern, and it, it looks really natural in person. Uh, this one in the middle definitely looks more like a, a drip area, more so than a waterfall. Um, but it's still pretty cool nonetheless. You can see it all cascading down. And then this one on the far right is more of a waterfall, I guess. But yeah, uh, I figured what better way to start off the tour than with uh, one of the tanks that I'm most proud of. So I hope you guys enjoyed the 300-gallon update. Now uh, let's get on to the rack system. All right, guys, I decided to do a voiceover for the entire room tour because the voiceover audio sounded so much better than my shotgun audio. So here you're looking at the main wall and the three empty slots up top obviously are going to be filled with three 44 by 17 by 24 inch vivariums. Uh, but you can see the new rack is completely built and uh, I don't plan on adding anything to it besides those three tanks. It's a good size and uh, adequate for a hobbyist. So the top right tank we're going to go over first is my Fagalamani Yellow Vivarium. This is the second pairing, sort of. Uh, that's a new female you're looking at there. Uh, my original Yellow Lamanis were in this Vivarium, but my original female started looking really rough um, a few months back. So... I decided to give her a break from breeding and everything, and I moved the original male to this tank with the new female I got um, in hopes that the female would have a break and have a chance to recover. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, anyways. So, um, you know, I'm not even sure some of the plants in this tank. It's The bromeliads are Neoregilia, Malibu, and Compacta. Um yeah, it's a sponge filter at bottom with the uh, dry lock and foam and uh, some aeroids and whatnot. Just, you know, my typical plant schemes for my breeder tanks. Um, I am happy to announce that they are breeding. And you can see here the Lumani tadpole grabbing some fresh air, which is uh, some pretty cool footage. And I'm really happy about that. So moving to the left of that. This is uh, another new tank and another new style of background for me. This is the cork flat, not to be confused with the cork bark. It's cork flat background. Um, I ended up, uh, you know, carving it and adding some extra layers to it. And uh, yeah, I shaved it with a wire wheel brush drill, drill bit attachment like I've done my other foam builds. So kind of my take on um, this style which I got from my buddy Sharif, a bunch of tanks on Instagram. Um, I got this, yeah, this style from him. And in this tank, I've got the Renatomea reticulata solid. There are three different morphs or forms of this frog. There's the solid, striped, and red-faced. Um, I have the solid, which I think are really cool frogs. Um, they're not so shy for me, which is cool. And uh, yeah, so the plants in this tank are same as usual. Nothing crazy here. Um, some philodendron, some peperomia. This ruffled leaf plant that I got from Classbox Tropicals is an undescribed species. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but whatever. So um, there's uh, some philodendron burrow marks and some low growing tropical moss and leaf litter. So all four of these tanks are new tanks. These were not in the last tour built these in March of 2022 
And uh, here's another one. And in this one, I've got the Renatomea Highland Sirensis, which I had before in a in situ alto, which I love the tank. I wish I could have kept it, but it just didn't match any other tanks. So it wouldn't match the rack system. So I uh, unfortunately had to get rid of it. But uh, I've got some Varegia Erythrodactylon and uh, some Philodendron, what's it called? Lincoln Park Zoo. Um, some other stuff in there. Typical for my tanks. Really cool frogs, though. Um, again, these ones aren't super bold, but they're not super shy either. They're kind of in the middle. So they do let me film them, and they don't run when I open the door. So um, kind of cool, but they're not out in your face like, uh, you know, Terribilis or uh, some of my Histrionica are just wildly bold. So uh, really cool frogs, though. And uh, these are the only two Ranatomea species I have, the Ranatomea reticulata and the Ranatomea highland sirensis. And the frog room is really dry right now because of that heater. Um, so normally right now I have all the tanks taped off. But since it's uh, film time and I wanted the glass to be clear, I've removed all the tape from the vents. So in this tank we've got some Dendrobates tinctorius azureus. This is a Watley line and Bertram line. Um, so they are fine spot azureus. And uh, this is my second pairing of the fine spots. I got from my buddy Nick Zappa or... Tink Tank, as some of you may know him. But, uh, yeah, it's another foam and dry lock. Uh, I did the dry brush technique on the dry lock, and I really liked it. I got that from, uh, I never tried the dry, the, uh, dry brush before, but um, I got that from Tanner from Serpa Design. And in this tank, we've got my Ufaga Histrionica Bullseye, which you guys have seen many times before. But the tank probably looks quite a bit different. Um... I ended up having to rescape kind of all the wood pieces because the background was falling off and it just was pretty miserable looking. So um, I ended up rescaping it. Uh, I didn't like have to actually pull the frogs or do any foaming or silicone. I just kind of put some new pieces of wood in there and balanced them wherever I wanted them to and propped the background up against the glass so there weren't any gaps or anything like that. So, um, yeah, same... Uh, Bromeliads as before, some Neoregia Malibu and Big O, but I did add some Varicosum and that other plant that I can't remember the name of. And here we have my Faga Lamani Yellow, the original tank I had them in. Um, haven't really made any changes to this, as you can see, and I don't have any adults in here. I have this one who's a, a sub-adult. Uh, it's got some stubby thighs, but um, I usually keep those frogs. So um, nothing different in this tank, and obviously you guys couldn't tell. Um, what I'm hinting at is I did lose my original female. Um, it was a long, slow, four to five month downhill slope process. Uh, I'm really gonna miss that frog. She was, she was my golden girl, <laughs> so to speak. But um, yeah, here's a couple nice clips of her. So sad day for the tropical garage, but um, you know, as a breeder. These things do happen. So next to that tank, we've got the Ufaga Histrionica Bahia Solana, which are sort of rising to the top as one of my favorites. Um, mainly, I mean, they are absolutely stunning, beautiful frogs, but um, they're so bold. They just do not care when I open the door, feeding them, taking pictures of them, recording them. They just, they're almost like Terribilis. It's... It's crazy how how bold these frogs are. Um, they weren't always that way either. You know, when I first got them, they were kind of shy, but you know, they've they've really come into their uh, environment and acclimated really well. So, uh, yeah, I'm just just really thrilled with those frogs. Um, yeah, they're just beautiful. Pardon the interruption. This is just some really cool. Ufaga Histrionica Bahia Solano courtship that I couldn't really fit into the tour any other way because it's such a long clip, but uh, I hope you guys enjoy it.
crime not to share that with you guys just so freaking cool and we're back and also with a very special frog these are the Ufaga histrionica large form redhead these are also just absolutely stunning frogs um one of the coolest things about the redheads is just how variable they are um you know, you could have four froglets and they literally look like they're from four different, you know, groupings of parents. Um, it's just wild. And uh, it's always fun and exciting. You know, some of the frogs, you know, the froglets come out bullseye. You know what to expect with um, the redheads. It's like it, it's literally like a it's a it's a mystery every time. So but these are just absolutely beautiful frogs. Um, the tank itself. And I think it's probably very similar to the last tour. Just has some Neo Malibu. Obviously, that seems to be the only bromeliad I use. And uh, I did add some this fake rock to it. I don't think I had in the last tour. I'm not sure. But uh, there, there's some fake rock. So, very cool tank. But those are the first two rows of, the, uh, of this rack. And now we're going to go down to the bottom. Let me sit down on my booty butt. And uh, first up, we've got the Dendrobates Tinctorius Vanessa, which seemed to be a crowd favorite. People love the Vanessa um, with, you know, much reason to. They are absolutely beautiful, black and white and gray frogs. Um, some are just black and white. Some have a tinge of blue, but these are not the same as powder blues. Sometimes people think they are. The froglets and juveniles definitely look just like powder blues, but as they develop and they age, they look, you know, far different. So uh, the tank itself is hasn't changed. I haven't added anything to this tank in, in years. So it's really just trimming and pulling plants and whatnot um, as far as the way it looks currently. Um, it does have some of that begonia, Maldonado, or Lita, or whatever you want to call it, which does grow like just it's such a pain in the butt for me. So I am ripping that out, you know, every two, three months, and I throw it out. Um, yeah, tank is very basic breeder tank for me. And, uh, yeah, really cool frogs. The Dendrobates Tinctorius Vanessa. And in this tank, we've got the Dendrobates Tinctorius Brazilian Yellowhead, which are also amazing looking frogs. Unfortunately, mine don't produce healthy offspring. Um, I've had a couple that were healthy, but I mean, we're talking maybe five or 10% that were healthy and the rest are they have deformities and the tadpoles are messed up and uh, yeah, it's annoying. But the tank, again, this tank hasn't changed in years. Um, just trimming and clipping, same thing that Begonia Maldonado and uh, the Van Karkovan is finally starting to take off. But uh, yeah, these are really cool frogs in a very basic breeder tank. Um, yeah, my favorite thing about these guys is just that vibrant yellow and the white toes. And to the left of them, we've got the Dendrobates Tinctorius Citronella. Um, I've always loved Citronella, and I bred them years ago, and from like 2009 and 2013, and I ended up losing my male. And I just, I think at that time, I uh, was kind of making the move more into the Ufaga game. So I just never picked them up again until I moved out in the garage where I had more room. 
Um, and yeah, I mean, look at these guys. They're just, they're just, they're just beautiful frogs. They're big, bold, hungry, voracious eaters. Um, one of mine has a dot and one is solid backed and the offspring have been so far, mm, I'd say 50, 50 on with a dot and without a dot, but the ones that do have a dot have a very small dot. So, um, really cool frogs. As far as plants, there's some moss, some liverwort. Uh, some varicosum, some grazielia. It's super simple. And in this tank, we've got the Dendrobates tinctorius oyapok. Uh, I picked these up a few years ago. They were in the last tour as well. Um, still have a trio, two males, one female. And uh, these guys produce pretty regularly for me. I don't pull many froglets just because I don't want to, or sorry, I don't, pull many eggs or raise many tadpoles just because I don't want to get stuck with a bunch. So I probably raise like, I don't know, 40 to 50 a year. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's, I like that number. Just, I feel like it's a good, good amount to supply the hobby with and not, you know, not too big of a number where you're stuck and lowering market costs and interest in the, the morphin itself. So, um, this one does have a lizard in it. As you can see, this is the Gonatodes ab ag agabularis or something. I'm not a lizard guy. I don't re exactly know. I got that lizard from my friend Jake um, when I went to drop off some frogs. He's like, here, man, take this lizard. So I was like, okay. And I just threw it in my uh, Oyapok tank. I thought it was dead, but I actually saw it when I was resetting their tank recently. And uh, yeah, it looked perfect, looked healthy. I was like, holy crap. And now we're gonna move on to the main rack or main wall. Um, this is gonna have the nine 44 by 17 by 24 inch vivariums. Um, right now up top, all I have is some froglets and some tubs and some supplies and whatnot. But um, yeah, I think this is gonna be a really nice kind of statement piece when you walk into the frog room to see the nine large vivariums. I don't know if they're, I think they're large. They're something like 80 gallons. Um, large-ish, I'll say. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we've just got some froglets in these tanks up top, some citronella, some yellowback, some fine spot lukes, some katari, um, another yellowback and, uh, citronella. And I also have two male giant orange tinctorious. Um, I got years ago. They were doing really poorly a few months back, but they have recovered and are doing really well, so... I'm happy to announce that. And in the other tub, I've got a bunch of mint terribilis and green sips. Uh, I think I may have some Vanessa as well in there. Um, but yeah, the mints are doing great. I have quite a few of those. So um, the tubs are really simple. It's just the sponge filter mat on the bottom. And then I do a thin layer of uh, dampened sphagnum moss and leaf litter on top. And then to the left of that, I've got my crickets for the terribilis and the craspidopus. I've got some leaf litter that I just microwaved in the house and made it smell terrible. And some Petri dishes and some face packs. I like to do my face packs right above the lights in the winter time because they stay at that, you know, 75, 76 degrees. So they're kind of perfect temperature for shipping. Um, but I'm really fed up with face packs right now because they keep leaking on me. But here is a new 44 by 17 by 24 inch tank. Again, this is the cork flat background. I did use two inch panels on this one and I really didn't have to add any layers to it. I just shaved it with the, the drill brush, or drill bit brush, whatever you want to call it. Um, and uh, it came out pretty cool. I think I used a, a darker cork on this one. Um, this is freshly set up, so it hasn't grown in well at all yet. Um, but stuff's still alive and nothing's really dying. So um, I think in a few months it'll be a, a nice nice design. Especially once I, you know, I'm done filming and I tape the tank back off. But uh, this one has my Ufaga Lamani orange. I currently have a female and I'm on the lookout for a male. So um, hopefully I can pair this beautiful lady up and get some breeding out of them, which would be really cool. Um... But yeah, you can see the background has a nice texture to it. And I think when the moss and 
vines and everything start growing up, but it's going to look really, really nice. But uh, you can see my orange Luwani as well isn't super orange. It's kind of a orangey yellow or a yellowy orange, I'd say. Um, but I've been trying to uh, beef up the carotenoids for her and kind of get that orange to come back a little bit. I'll see what I can do. I'll keep you guys... Well, no, I probably won't keep you guys updated because I don't post enough on here, but I'll do my best <laughs> or try to do my best. That's probably the better better verbiage. Uh, to the right of that, I've got the Anchikaya Ufaga Histrionica Anchikaya tank, uh, another 44 by 17 by 24. Um, this one's gone through some changes from the last tour. I think the last tour I had a bunch of hieroglyphica in here, but those hieroglyphica needed trimmed and eventually got to the point they were just too big, so... I had to remove them, and I acted quickly, and I put in some Neoregilia Malibu and Neoregilia Compacta, I think. They're, they're the same species, I guess, but my bromeliad guy I was talking to was saying that the Compacta are actually larger than the Malibu, which is kind of weird, you know? You would think the Compacta would be the smaller one, but nope, they're the bigger one. So, um, tank's still doing really well. These frogs don't seem to want to breed for me. Um, I've had three froglets out of the water in three years and all three of them were not healthy or I should say did not make it. So um, at this point, they're just pets for me um, and I absolutely love them and they're one of my favorite pets. So um, very blessed to have those and, uh, you know, never thought I'd own those frogs. And to the right of them, I've got my blue histrionica and what you're currently looking at is a new female I got. Uh, a little while back because I lost my original female last winter, which was devastating. But I am happy to announce that these ones are producing and I've got one frog out of the water already. And as far as the tank goes, um, it has changed quite a bit. It used to have a bunch of the Varigia Fenestralis, but they just got too big and I had to remove them. And I replaced them with the Regilia Malibu, um, which the frogs seem to like those as well. So that's always a good sign. Um, here is one of the morphing tadpoles, probably be out of the water in a couple of weeks, I would say. But uh, truly a stunning, stunning blue frog. And below them, this tank probably looks vastly different as well from the last tour. This is the Dendrobates leucomelis fine spot. Um, I ended up pulling all the bromeliads out just because these frogs don't really use them. So I didn't have a need for them in the tank. They were kind of cluttering it. Um, there's a fern that's been growing in this tank that I didn't put there. That's just, uh, it's the bane of my existence at this point. Um, this frog here is I call Hunchback Helen. I'm pretty sure it's a female. Um, it's deformed, but I've told you guys before, when I have frogs that are deformed, I don't euthanize them. I do give them a shot. This one's over a year old and doing really, really well, as you saw, it was eating and everything like that, so. Um, the other plants in this tank are doing really well. The orchids are actually holding on. Um, Biophytums, philodendrons, peperomias, moss, liverwort, all that stuff is really growing nice. The tank kind of looks barren up at the top because that's where all the fern was that I removed, so. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's going through a... It's going through a phase right now, I'll say. But I think uh, in a couple months it should look really cool. Um, the terrestrial frogs or the non-bromeliad frogs, I think their tanks look really cool without bromeliads. You know, you get a chance to let some of the other stuff shine through. And, um, you know, bromeliads take up a ton of space and they kind of get all the glory. But this is uh, another orchid. I'm surprised it's still alive. It's the uh, Lepanthes Caledic caledictian tentaculata cross, I believe. Um, I can't believe it survived. It's, I think it's the only one I've ever had survive out of probably 15 or 20. So that one's been holding on for a couple of years and that makes me happy because it is one of my favorite orchids. So, um, but yeah, these guys are producing for me and still doing well. And to the left of them, this is the Philobates terribilis mint vivarium that I did a highlight on a couple years ago. <laughs> Um, that Ethereum is just massive, and I just don't have it in me to rip it out, even though I should. I think the tank would look way better if I pulled it, but it's just so big and nice. I, I just can't do it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, these frogs are still doing their thing. They're just, they're heathens. Um, tons of eggs, tons of tadpoles, tons of froglets. 
big, beautiful, massive, massive frogs. Um, I, I should say massive, massive dart frogs, not frogs, but um, yeah, the uh, varicosum and Celtipicana, the peperomias, everything's growing really well in this tank. It's probably from all the all the poop and <laughs> fertilizer from the terribilis because they eat so many crickets and fruit flies. Um, you know, it's just uh, it's really good for the plants. So. Uh, I did have to pull a bunch of the uh, Peperomia villicollis. It started getting a little too stringy and just creating this weird, crazy bush type of thing at the top. Um, so I had to pull that. But other than that, I do very little maintenance on this tank. There are some tadpoles in that water area, which is kind of cool. But uh, to the left of them, this is the um, new, another new 44 by 17 by 24. Probably looks kind of barren. This is the uh, Dendrobates tinctorius. Azurius, fine spot. Uh, this is my original trio, not pair, but my original trio that I have. Um, very reduced pattern. There's very little black spots on either, on all, any of the animals. But uh, I left this one really bare on purpose because when that moss and liverwort and the little marcravias and vines take off, I think this tank's going to look really, really cool. So I'll probably do an update on this. <laughs> I know that's kind of funny, but um, I'll probably do an update on this one maybe in six, seven months um, just to show you guys because I think as far as the hardscape and the way I carved the foam with the drill brush, I'm starting to get a little more surgical with it where I can really manipulate um, the shapes and pattern I want to do in the foam. And I think this is a this is the tank that really uh, kind of displays that. So I'll show that off in a couple months. But right now it looks pretty pretty barren there's not not many plants um maybe have been set up for six weeks maybe eight weeks total um with frogs maybe four weeks so but anywho uh, i think it's going to be a really strong design and uh yeah i mean the frogs are just simply gorgeous these are from uh travis stuchman from tcs dart tcs dart frogs um good buddy of mine and uh yeah i'm really happy to own them and yeah, they're always, anytime someone comes over, people are like, whoa, what are those things? Because <laughs> they're just so cool. But you can see here that texture that I'm talking about and the carving that I did. Um, there's like some little tunnel areas basically in this wood that you can't really see unless, unless you're looking at it in person. Uh, I've had a couple people come that have seen it in person. They're like, oh, it looks way different than the Instagram stories. That's a way cooler design. So anyways, let's reset. For the next rack, moving on to the final left wall. Uh, on the top left, we've got my Ufaga Pamilio Bastamenos. These are the Tropical Garage, or AKA the Unknown Locale. Um, these are a stunning Pamilio. I get some that are orange, red, orange, and red with white feet. Not just the white toes, they have the white feet and the white bellies. Um, the males have a dark throat patch. These could be red frog beach, but, um, they didn't come in as that. So I'm not going to call them that, but, um, truly awesome, awesome Pamilio. Um, I think since the last tour, I did change the bromeliads as you saw in the beginning there. Those were the, uh, Varigia Sondrasi. Um, they seem to really like using them. So I may end up picking up some more. Um, to the right of them, we've got the Ufaga Pamilio Salarte, which probably look kind of similar to the ones I just showed, but these ones don't have the white bellies or the white feet. They have the white toe tips. Looks like someone took a little miniature nail polish brush and brushed their fingernails. Um, uh, their tank looks pretty similar. You can see here the infamous walk of the Ufaga. So, so cool watching a move like that. Um, but yeah, these are a, a breathtaking Pamilio species, or locale, I should say. And uh, I think any Ufaga enthusiast should have those in the collection. To the right of them, we've got the Ufaga Pamilio Escudo. Um, whoa. And their tank looks probably identical to the last tour. Um, lots of moss growth and bromeliads. Um, really cool Pamilio. Really, really tiny Pamilio. Frog, I've talked about it before, but the froglets are just you're kind of in disbelief how small they are, but, uh, 
Really cool. Lots of personality in these guys. Um, to the right of that, we've got the Faga Pamilio Rio Calubre, and their tank looks pretty sad right now. Um, again, that whole dry thing I talked about in the wintertime really dried out a lot of the plants and moss, but nonetheless, the frogs are just super cool. Blue almost have like a, a purple hue to them. It's really cool. Uh, my male especially has kind of a purple hue to him, so um, they do really well, though. Lots of froglets out of them every year. Um, every, all the Pamelio produce really well for me, to be honest with you. Um, below them is the Ufaga Histrionica Tato. Uh, I don't believe these were in the last tour. Um, this was an old tank that I kind of rescaped. I left the background up, but I kind of reset the wood and made a new wood hardscape. Um, and I think I used the same plants that were in it. I can't, I think this was the, in the last tour, I think it had the, um, Ufaga Pamilio Rio Bronco. Maybe I honestly, I can't remember. I'd have to go back and watch, but the Tato nonetheless are amazing looking histrionica, really, really unique looking frogs and quite variable too. Um, I did have some producing out of my original pair from these guys uh, about a year and a year and a half ago. And um, yeah, I ended up losing one of the pairing. Uh, was it my male? And I do have two frogs in there now, but I think they're both female. So um, yeah, it seems like a reoccurring thing that I keep talking about losing males and females. But um, my Ufaga, the large obligate, like the large Ufaga, Histrionica and Sylvatica breeders and keepers, they know what I'm talking about. But a lot of you guys that don't, probably like this guy keeps killing all kinds of frogs and it's anybody that joins the large obligate world and they tell me about a frog doing poorly and just randomly dies i say welcome to the large ufaga game because that's just part of it so unfortunately um to the left of them this is the ufaga sylvatica san lorenzo tank um really really cool frogs but um, these guys are amazing i've had them for about 10 years and produced a plethora of froglets and these guys are like tanks for me um i rarely rarely lose froglets um very very hardy and bold and hate to interrupt again but uh i felt that i had to share these clips as well uh, this was my pair of lufaga sylvatica san lorenzo they just happened to be courting when i was filming so uh i had to include this as well Hope you guys enjoyed those beautiful clips of the San Lorenzo Sylvatica. Now, back to the tour. So yeah, uh, this is some cool footage of a morphing froglet, or morphlet, whatever you want to call it. Uh, just thought it was super cute and uh, really cool. So I'm glad I captured that as well. Um, tank, though, I mean, should look really similar to the previous tour. You know, obviously some and to the left of them, we've got the Ufaga Pamilio Cemetery Bastimentos. Uh, these were my first Pamilio, and these guys are very, very bold. Much more bold than the Tropical Garage or Unknown Locale Basti. But to be fair, my Unknown Locale are farm-raised uh, wild-caught, where these ones are captive. Um, the tank looks pretty similar as it did before. Um, this plant here, I can't think of the name of it. I got it from Nick Stacy. Uh, it starts with an A, and I think it, the species name with a Z, maybe? I don't know. I I don't really remember. You may have seen it in the... Um, I showed it earlier in the Faga Histrionica bullseye tank over here. Sorry, the lights are out, so I can't really see it, but um, that tank over there. Uh, it, it's a cool plant. It kind of, like, creates these draping leaf effect and looks really natural. Um, but yeah, these guys are just, they're always a, a fan favorite and, um, 
I think they're probably the coolest Pamelio. Bastabenos in general, to me, are, are the coolest. Most variable, um, the boldest, good size, you know, pretty, uh, pretty good breeders, I'd say, as a whole. And moving on, we've got a really pathetic looking Dendrobates Tinctorius Katari tank. And I apologize for the way it looks right now, but I promise there is a reason why it looks the way it does. Um, the uh, most disgusting plant in the hobby, the Ficus Pamilla, Quercifolia, oak leaf fig, whatever you want to call it, just ended up creating this huge bush and it grew out from the background probably like 10 to 12 inches out just created the, it started growing towards the front and it looked kind of cool but just was taking up so much space blocking out so much light i just ended up having to pull it all so um, that's why the tank looks so bad it'll look cool again once the moss starts growing and i plant some vines and whatnot so um don't worry that tank will have a resurgence i promise um yeah, I'm just talking about how close that ficus came to the glass. It was like four inches from the front glass. So I probably should have took a pic or a video to share with you guys. But I'm a terrible um, YouTuber or content creator. So I don't think to do stuff like that. But anyways, these frogs are doing really well. They're really cool. Um, I used to have a pair. I do have a trio now because the one I, I held back, um, the one I held back has... You know, pretty much no spots, as you can see there. If you shine a light on them, you can see spots. Um, but if you don't have lights on, it just looks like a big, dark blue, almost black mass. But um, Katari Tinctorius are one of my favorites. Here you can see I have a flash on there, and you can kind of see its pattern more. Same with all these all these images here. These are all flash, so you can see more of the pattern of them. Uh, to the naked eye with no you know, external lighting. Uh, or no extra lighting, I should say. Um, they look much, much darker. Which is cool or less cool to some people. I think it's really cool. I love them. I think the, the blue is so unique. Um, it's just they're, they're a fascinating Tinctorious. So that's the mid-level on the far left rack. And we're going to sit back down on my booty butt. And in this tank, this is, the actual, this is the, actually the first enclosure I built myself. Um, the glass enclosure I'm talking about, not doing like a scape or whatever, but I actually, this was the, this was the old drip wall tank. I had some erratus in, uh, the, uh, Pena Blanca erratus, and it now currently houses my Olabates Zapparo, which are amazing looking frogs. They're amazing little frogs. I have a group of them in here. I don't even know how many I have, maybe seven. Um, they're really, really cool frogs. They have a nice nice bright red color uh, with some blue and they've got like a granular texture. They're just really, really awesome looking frogs, but it's weird how their boldness is because they're always out. If I'm from afar, I can always see them out foraging and they call all day long. But the second I go towards that tank with the camera or myself, it's like they're, they're gone. So I really wanted to share their calling, a calling clip of them with this video, but uh, I just don't know if I'm going to capture it at this point. I just, they call all day long. I may just have to record it and insert a clip here uh, so you can hear it. But yeah, they just, I mean, I'm sure you probably heard it in the background during this voiceover, but for whatever reason, they just, uh, they're so shy when you come around. But if you're like at a distance, they're they're amazing looking frogs and they're amazing um, as far as activity, but plants in this tank, I don't know what's in here. This is a, a hodgepodge of stuff. Hodgepodge or hodgepodge? I don't know. I think I've had a few too many tonight, but <laughs> uh, I'll say a hodgepodge of plants. Uh, some of these are from my buddy Richard Gilliam or Bubba Gilliam as they like to call him. Um, there's some other stuff I got from Sean Harrington in some froglet packages. This one here that like think it's a pilea maybe i'm not exactly sure but sean sent that to me and um that plant i do like the way it looks but it grows a little too crazy as well i'm constantly throwing that one out and uh you have to apologize their screen blacked out because my memory card exceeded the space so i had to go upload some stuff and uh 
free up some space. So um, that's how that's how much video I'm recording for these room tours. Honestly, probably 90 to 100 gigs um, of, of video I'm recording, possibly more. Uh, in this tank, we've got uh, some Dedrobates Tinctorious. Um, that's uh, Philodendron Montanum there. And uh, moss grew really well. Got some wood. And uh, I actually built this tank, like this hardscape, I did in a few hours. I did black foam, and then I pressed Hygrolon directly into the wet foam. And then I just foamed in some wood with some black, all-purpose black, great stuff expanding foam um and then it was like you know it cured in a couple hours and you know it was done so uh, i really like the way it looks i think it's a really really cool looking tinctorious tank again no bromeliads um so yeah you'll like you'll notice that my tinctorious tanks recently have been having no bromeliads in this tank we've got the dendrobates tinctorious green sip Halloweeny. This tank probably looks vastly different from the last tour as well. I think two tours ago, maybe in 2020, it was really, really lush with that ficus. And in 2021, it was really bare um, because I had to rip all that ficus out, which I explained in the 2021 tour. And now you can see that moss is growing back and the little vines are starting to grow. And um, that's sort of the look I like going for with the Dendrobates Tinctorious tanks. And the green sips, um, they've always been one of my favorite Tinctorious. Um, I just always love that green-blue contrast, um, the spotting. They're just, they're, they've are they always been one of my favorites. And I mean, when I say always, I'm going back to like the year 2000 <laughs> when I started uh, with dart frogs. So um, I've always, always loved these guys. Really, really cool. That male there is uh, 14 years old. So beautiful, beautiful male, um, still breeding. These guys breed like crazy for me still. So, um, yeah, don't think if you're buying dart frogs, don't think it's going to be a, a two year investment. These guys will live for a long, long time if you take care of them correctly. So, um, yeah, tons of moss in this tank. It's actually one of my, uh, one of the sources I use for moss. <laughs> if I'm building a new tank and I haven't ordered any new moss, I just take pieces of this. And uh, throw it, start it, propagate it in the new tank. Uh, you can see the ventilation there is actually gets covered in moss in the summertime, but it's wintertime and it's dry. So uh, in this tank, we've got the Dendrobates tinctorious yellowback. And you can see there why I hate that begonia. That begonia lita is what I got it as, but some people call it Maldonado and the Gibonia sector. I don't... Look at it. Look, look. I mean... It takes up so much room and eventually just starts to block light. And I do like the plant, but it just, it grows too crazy for me. I, I just can't deal with that constantly. I, I've pulled it out of this tank, like literally like a five gallon bucket full, probably four to five times. And it grows back in two, three months. That's kind of a cool shot. You can see my uh, male yellowback with a tadpole on his back. Um, didn't even know was in there but i started filming i was like hey um same thing with my oyapok the oyapok had a dad bull too and didn't even know if i talked about it but um there is some other plants you could see there was a little bit of some mark robbie ascent poking out there um and as i was rummaging around through the tank um i felt something move and that that frog there hopped out so i was like oopsie sorry buddy um but yeah I think I set this tank up in 2019 when I did this. Um, so pretty much the same as it was then, just all new growth. Um, but yeah, yellowbacks, I think, are a, a severely underrated Tinctorious. Um, I think they're just they're really, really stunning frogs. And um, yeah, they just don't get enough light shed on them. So... Uh, that is the last vivarium of the frog room tour. And, uh, yeah, I, if you guys are still here, whoever stayed to this long, you guys are some, some true OGs and I appreciate you. Um, that's the final wall, the, the far left wall. 
And again, here's the overall look at where the room is currently at with the right wall, the main wall, and the far left wall. Um, yeah, I really like the direction it's going, super uniform, and uh, I really can't wait to get those three up top done. But um, I did end up putting up some egg crate, some black egg crate along the top so I could put my fruit flies up there because uh, it doesn't have the wires like the old wire rack, so I had to make some sort of shelf, um, and I wanted it to be able to breathe. I did also uh, make a little hook for my little grabber. Uh, helps me get fruit flies down because, you know, we're about 90, 94 inches off the ground where the fruit flies are. So um, it's pretty high up. So <laughs> instead of getting on a step stool every time, I use my little my little old person grabber. No offense if there's anybody super old watching this. I know I'm super old, but um, if anyone's really old. Uh, I also made a little shelf here with some spare tubing I had. Uh, I put my thermometer and my fly cups and ringers or whatever I have out just random random stuff um, and then I put uh, I put some thermometers um, on each wall put one at the top and one at the bottom so I could know in the summertime if the tanks up top are getting too hot you know bump the AC a little bit and if the tanks down low in the winter time are getting a little too cold then I can bump the heat a little bit so more uh, monitoring of temperature um, so you know, that, those are a couple things I added um, that I didn't have in the room before. Well, I guess I could have, but it just seems to make more sense now. But um, yeah, anyways, for you guys that stayed for the grueling 51 minutes of this video, I do appreciate you. You guys are like a cult. I'm amazed that you guys would stay this long and watch my really probably super boring video. Um, but I, I do uh, appreciate you. Just know that. And uh, any new people that stayed this long, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. If not, I just uh, hope you enjoyed the video. So, um, yeah, that's going to do it. Goldberg, out.